to give a quick tour of the passive house um, that we're going to be building this summer. It's actually a multi-generational home. So my parents will be living in um, uh, one part. That will be the aging in place part. And then my wife and I will be living in another part. And then we have two adult children who will be living in two other parts. And uh, both of the uh, young adult children are going to be helping me to actually build it. This is the second home that we've that we've built together. When they were younger, we actually built a straw bale home. And so I'll put in the description a link to the straw bale home that we built a number of years ago. Now, a couple of unique features about this particular passive house is you'll notice that on the exterior, the exterior cladding is going to be yakasugi, or in the U.S. we also call it shishugiban, and this is what it looks a little bit like. Um, and basically, it's cedar wood that has been burned, and it gives it a couple of unique features. One is it's kind of maintenance-free, don't need to paint it, and then um, the bugs don't like to eat it, and uh, it's also kind of fireproof since it's already been burned. So a little bit more about the, the passive home. It's actually going to be an ICF home, so that stands for Insulated Concrete Forms. This is what an ICF form actually looks like. And uh, um, uh, so you have two and a half inches of foam on the outside, two and a half inches of foam on the inside, and then you fill it with concrete and rebar. And basically it will last for hundreds of years. And because of this unique feature, it also acts as kind of a cooler. And uh, so it keeps the air on the inside warm or cool depending on the season and because of all the concrete because of that thermal mass you end up with um, uh, very nice constant temperatures and then it also helps in regards to sound so going back to the design just a little bit it's a monoslope roof and uh, that's both to put in additional solar as well as um, uh, capture a lot of the rainwater and then we have a greenhouse on the back but let me give you a quick kind of three-dimensional tour of what that will look like so on the front we actually have two garages they're a little bit bumped out that mainly has to do with some of the setbacks that we're facing in in the on the piece of property that we're building and uh, on the front is also one of the entrances and this will make a little bit more sense as we look at the floor plans um, uh, but we have a front entrance on this side and then we also have a side entrance on this side so for my parents they'll be able to to get into the aging in place portion of the house through either the garages or through the front door and then for my two young adult children and their families they'll also be able to gain access either through this door or going through the garage door Something that probably jumps out immediately is this is the west side. So I should probably orient things. This is the north side, and this is the west side. And because it is a passive home, one of the things that we've done is designed it so that there are a total of zero, zero windows um, in this passive home. And a lot of that has to do with, especially during the summertime, you can really overheat a house with the windows on the west side. So we have chosen to have zero windows on the west side. And then on the south side, you'll notice this. This is actually our year-round greenhouse. And uh, um, uh, we're super excited about the year-round greenhouse because we live in a, a climate zone five. And so during the winter, it gets very cold, it snows, and to be able to have the ability to grow orange trees, fig trees, tropical fruit, I'm super excited about. And one of the reasons why it's even going to be possible is because um, we do have access to an earth tube that goes along the side of the house. And at that earth tube, we'll be able to pull the warm air, the quote-unquote warm air during the winter, um, from that earth tube and to be able to heat this year-round greenhouse. And then during the summer, we'll also be able to pull the cool air from the earth tube to, to cool it. Um, uh, something else that you'll notice too is that the windows on the first level actually look out into the greenhouse and that's partially just because of where we're building and that the neighbor to the south is, is really close. Um, uh, 
on the second level and the third level, the windows will look out, but because the neighbor on the south just have a, has a single story home, it'll make it so that these windows are basically looking over the home to some beautiful views to the, to the south. And then on the east side, this is the entrance that my wife and I will have to our por portion of this home. And uh, then you'll see we do have uh, some windows on the east, not as many as we do on, on the south. And, and uh, the reason for more windows on the south has to do with the passive aspect of the home. So using these windows to help to heat the home uh, during the winter time. But we do have some amazing views to the east. And so we did want to put in a couple of the views, a couple of the windows. And then to the north, we have probably the most spectacular views. And so even though it's not necessarily best passive house principles to put as many windows as we did, um, we did make a compromise just because the views to the north is, as you'll see if you if you look at the the views video in the subscription in the description that I'll also include that link. You'll see why we did include so many windows to the north because those views really are just absolutely spectacular. So with that that said, um, uh, yeah. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into the floor plans. And uh, let's see right here. So we'll start actually on the first floor. So the door that you saw where my parents are going to come in is right here. And uh, they actually have a number of options. So as they pull the car in, then uh, they can either come through this entrance and into their part, or they can come through this side door and into their living room. And the reason why we've set this up is so that um, uh, they can have a little bit more privacy because this is also the door that um, uh, my two young adult kids and their families will be able to come in. So you come in, there's this little entryway. You can turn left to go into my parents' living room, or you can go straight up the stairs. And in just a second, you'll see um, uh, the, the two places for the young adult kids and their family. So we have the living room for my parents. And very much because they are um, getting to be a little bit older, we wanted to design it in a way so that it, it's aging in place, that it's safe, um, and decreases the, the trip hazards. So a uh, little living room, dining room, then we have a nice little island um, in the kitchen. Uh, number of, so coat closet, um, pantry storage, washer dryer, um, additional pantry. And, uh, and then this is kind of a unique feature because in the city where we're building, they only allow a total of two kitchens. And so now they will allow you to have two very large kitchens. And so that's what we've done. This is actually just one kitchen. And, and they said that it was fine to include two of everything because when you're sharing a very large kitchen between um, two families, then uh, it's nice to have two of everything. So you'll see there's two ranges, there's two sinks, there's two fridges. Basically, yep, there's two of everything. And then a little bit more on my parents' side. This is their master bedroom suite. And uh, so uh, a nice soaking tub, a nice large uh, shower, and then the toilet. And then in their bedroom, um, uh, they have a nice uh, king-size room for a king-size bed. And then a nice walk-in closet. Over here on this side, this is actually my wife's and my side. And so you'll come in. This is the living room area, dining room area, and then the kitchen, nice big island. And uh, my wife really wanted a, a very large pantry. And so we have a very nice, large walk-in pantry. This is the half bath that we have on our side. And then this is the um, a part of the kitchen that we share with my parents. So this is our side. That's my parents' side. And then uh, let's take a quick trip down the stairs. So to to go upstairs for our our part of the house, you can go up the stairs here, and then to go downstairs to our bedroom, um, uh, you'll actually go down these stairs. So let's take a look at that real quick. So as you come down the stairs, it drops you out into here. This is the family rec room, 
And uh, then this is our master bedroom. And so we have access to um, the toilet and the shower tub area, uh, walk-in closet, and then uh, come around on this side and you go into our laundry room. And so in addition to having the laundry room, that's also where we'll have the extra um, refrigerator and freezer. And then you can uh, go through this door. This is just a storage area. And uh, over here on my parents' side, if, um, uh, if they wanted to, they're also able to uh, come downstairs. And uh, when they get down to the bottom of the stairs, my dad can either have a little workshop area or this could also turn, be turned into a small bedroom. My mom wanted a, an office. And uh, so it can either be an office or it can also be a second bedroom downstairs for them and uh, then over here this is a unique feature this is actually going to be our root cellar so with the greenhouse um, uh, having that greenhouse on the back we'll be able to grow year-round and it'll also be nice to be able to store um, uh, some of the some of the stuff that we grow here in the root cellar this is underneath the garage so there's actually nothing here that's just um, in essence that's just dirt so let's take a quick trip. Oh, and then there's also a second bathroom downstairs for this side. And uh, so once again, just a toilet, um, a tub and shower. So let's take a quick trip upstairs. So actually, let's look back at this. So here, the uh, two young adult children and their families, they'll come in through this door. They'll walk up the stairs. And uh, when they get to the top of the stairs, they can hang a left for one family or they can hang a right for the other family. Now with that said, because of the two kitchen rule, technically they are sharing a kitchen. But once again, they have two of everything. So they have two sinks, they have two stoves, they have two fridges. It just makes it easier for two families um, on this level to share one large kitchen if there's two of everything. So you hang a right and go through this door have a nice um, uh, walk-in closet. And the reason why we did this is the other unique feature of this house is, is that it is expandable and upgradable. And what I mean by that is we'll have a post and beam system going down the middle of, uh, the, of the home. And that allows us, if we ever wanted to, totally remodel all of these walls that you see are non-load bearing. The only load bearing um, aspect of the house is the post and beams going down down the center and then the ICF walls those actually um, uh, are also part of the load, load bearing structure so one of the ideas is as the family expands then we can also build the home in phases and so this particular look is instead of building out the upstairs this is just finishing it so that it's more of just a one bedroom small um, uh, small living space now once this particular couple starts to have children then they can get rid of this wall this can be turned into a large living room and then they can expand upstairs for the bedrooms but as of right now um, uh, a small little toilet area this would actually be a shower area in this scenario and then over here on this side, um, uh, this is already built out for a larger family. And uh, so a nice living room, dining room. And uh, over here, this is how this family is able to get upstairs. Now what's also unique too about our side, so for my wife, my wife and I's side, let's go back here. So ours, we can also go upstairs and it has access to um, uh, these two bedrooms. So you come up the stairs, hang a left, and you're able to um, have one bedroom here, another bedroom there, and then uh, a uh, shower, shower slash tub and toilet. So this is technically part of my wife's and I's um, uh, side. And then, so for this family, they're able to go up the stairs and uh, when they go up the stairs then as you can see there's a lot more bedrooms <laughs> so they can come up the stairs and uh, this is one bedroom 
So this is more of the kids' bedroom, another kids' bedroom. This would be a little nursery. So very small bedroom, but for babies and toddlers, plenty big enough. And then another uh, walk-in closet here. Come into this room. This this would be more the parents' room because they have a nice big walk-in closet. And then they have their own bathroom over here. All the kids would share this bathroom right here. And then this family on this side would have this washer and dryer room. So now let's look at this family over here on this side. They come up the stairs and uh, they're able to go into their laundry room over here, have another um, uh, closet right there for linens. And uh, then they can hang a right. They also have a, a, a nursery room for um, babies and toddlers. And then a kid's room, able to have two beds here. Come around over here, another kid's room with two beds. And then uh, this would be the parent's room. So come in, nice walk-in closet, queen-size bed. And uh, the parents would all have access to their own um, uh, bathroom as well. So overall, let's go back to this picture. Overall, this home, uh, no problem. So overall, this home, we will be able to put four families in, uh, in this home. It's about 9,000 square feet. And so a little bit less than um, 2,000 square feet per family. And uh, then uh, on the greenhouse, it's almost 900 square feet. And we really are excited to be able to grow figs and oranges and, and tropical fruit. And uh, then uh, you're able to see the basement as well. So a uh, couple of thoughts to include in the um, uh, comments section below is number one, if you have any questions. But number two, I'm really curious to think, to, to find out what people's estimates are on how much it is going to cost to build this 9,000 um, uh, square foot home. And... Uh, and then in terms of the passive principles, this was just a really quick um, overview of the floor plan. But if you would like for me to go into some of the passive principles that will make it so that I can heat and cool this home with the equivalent. So heat and cool a home that is 9,000 square feet with the equivalent of basically two hair dryers. If you're interested in uh, some of the passive principles, um, uh, I'd love to... Uh, I'm doing another video if people are interested in, in seeing that. And then I also wanted to show the roof real quick. So let's go back to here. So let's take a look at this roof. So up here on this roof, on this side, we'll actually be putting in about 20,000 kilowatts of solar. And then up here, this will be more of an uh, entertaining deck. And so we'll obviously put up some, some guardrails. But the views up here, once again, are absolutely stunning. And uh, we'll also be able to put a rooftop garden up here and be able to grow things on uh, like sweet potatoes that are able to trellis down. Because the nice thing about sweet potatoes is um, uh, the potatoes are up here, but all of the leaves can grow down in this direction. And sweet potato leaves are also edible. So, um, uh, yeah, if you want to know more about the passive principles on how to be able to heat and cool the house um, just leave a comment below and uh, then it would be fun to kind of do a competition to see who who comes the closest on how much it's actually going to cost to build this 9,000 um, square foot home so with that I will go ahead and sign off and look forward to hearing your comments and questions